Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer has announced that he will be retiring from the Supreme Court at the age of 83. I think that this is a sound decision. Many people were urging him to retire just because being that old on the Supreme Court, not to sound ageist, is a little bit of a risk. And if RGB's death taught us anything, it's that we can't take things for granted as a country. Things can change very rapidly, and you don't want to put Democrats in a predicament where they lose another Supreme Court seat, where the split is then 7-2. to two. I mean, him being replaced isn't necessarily going to change much on the Supreme Court, but it's good that a Republican like Donald Trump, perhaps in 2024, 2025, does not get the opportunity to have one more Supreme Court seat. But the elephant in the room is... Is this even going to be something that Joe Biden can accomplish, given how Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema have obstructed basically everything that the president has tried to accomplish? So there's a lot of details here to unpack. For more on this, we go to Brett Wilkins of Common Dreams, who explains Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said Biden's nominee to replace Breyer will receive a prompt hearing and will be considered and confirmed by the full Senate with all deliberate speed, according to Reuters. Advocates urged Breyer to retire while Democrats control the U.S. Senate, which must approve the president's pick, given that the upper chamber is evenly split between Democrats and Republicans, with Vice President Kamala Harris casting tie-breaking votes. There are concerns that Senators Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, who have torpedoed their own party's agenda, including by refusing to abolish the filibuster, could thwart a progressive nominee. Since the Republican-controlled Senate in 2017 invoked the so-called nuclear option, which eliminated the 60-vote threshold for Supreme Court nominees to secure the confirmation of Justice Neil Gorsuch, the first of former President Donald Trump's three Supreme Court nominees, a simple majority vote is all that will be required to approve Biden's pick. If Manchin and Sinema try to screw around with Biden's nomination to replace Justice Breyer, it's going to be torturous and pitchforks time, Mark Jacob, a former Chicago Sun-Times editor, tweeted. Yeah, right. However, other observers noted that both of the senators have been reliable votes as Biden appoints federal judges at a record pace. Now, I'm sorry, but the pitchfork and torches line is just laughable. Whenever liberals huff and puff, they instantaneously back down the second there's even a minimal amount of pressure exerted on them. So I don't expect the liberals to put up a fight if Manchin and Cinema do indeed try to block whoever Joe Biden chooses to nominate. Having said that, though, there is some cause for optimism because Biden and or, or because Manchin and Cinema rather have been improving all of Biden's federal judges. Uh, so we'll see. But then again, I think it would be foolish to kind of give them the benefit of the doubt given what they've done so far. So I think that we should basically expect the worst, but cross our fingers and hope for the best. It'll be fascinating to see how this plays out. Uh, but there is the question of who is Joe Biden going to pick? So uh, preferably, the first thing you should consider is that they are very, very progressive in their views. And the second most important thing is is that they're young because who knows when Democrats are, are going to have control once again. And seeing as how Mitch McConnell has stolen two Supreme Court seats from Democrats, don't take any chances. Nominate someone who's safe, who's young, who can serve for a very long time. Now, there is someone who Biden is likely to nominate or who is at least considering. And that person is Katanji Brown Jackson. Now, Billy Freeland came up with this fantastic recommendation, in my opinion. And this is someone who Biden is already likely considering. So uh, Freeland writes, I'm partial to Katanji Brown Jackson, a D.C. Circuit judge and former Briar clerk. Judge Jackson is a former public defender and experience sorely lacking on the highest court in the land. So her experience as a public defender would be invaluable in my opinion. And also really important thing here, she's pretty young. She's in her early 50s. I think she's 51 to be specific, but this would be really important. She could potentially serve out decades on the Supreme Court if need be. We we want someone who could serve, who's capable and also progressive. Um, now, on top of those two qualifications, it's really important to note that there's never been a black woman on the Supreme Court. So if she's confirmed, her confirmation would be historic. So I am really happy with this particular uh, nomination. I'm not necessarily too familiar with her rulings. But honestly, we just need someone to vote with the liberal justices there, and I'm happy with that. Young, liberal, I'm fine with that. Progressive, ideally, but as long as they're not going to be another vote for conservatives, I'll take it. I mean, at this point, we are desperate with the state of the current Supreme Court. Now, there are other options that Biden is also considering, two in particular. Another prospect is U.S. District Court Judge J. Michelle Childs, who was appointed by former President Barack Obama in 2010 and is reportedly backed by House Majority Whip James Clyburn. I'll pass on that. A prominent Biden ally. A third is Leandra Kruger, an associate justice at the California Supreme Court and former principal deputy U.S. Solicitor General during the Obama administration. So I don't know 
much about Leandra Kruger, but I will pass on Michelle Childs. Don't want anyone who uh, Clyburn supports. He backed Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders in 2016. He backed Joe Biden over Bernie Sanders in 2020. We all see how that's working out. So anyone who he believes is good, I'm just going to assume by default that they're they're not good. So, um, and that's reductionist, of course, I acknowledge that. But um, his judgment is bad. He's not looking out for the people. He's looking out for his donors. So I just have to assume that he's opting for someone who's the most corporatist. So, yeah, uh, I think that the uh, the one who is probably the most favorable, currently the favorite to become the nomination for Joe Biden is Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. And I would be absolutely enthusiastic about this choice. It's just a matter of will Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema actually allow this to happen? I just, I don't have that much hope. I mean, again, there's there's cause for some level of optimism. I say that very cautiously because they haven't been blocking Biden's federal appointments, but I wouldn't put it past them to morally grandstand about how this is a far leftist activist judge. We don't know. So we'll just have to wait and see. Again, I am anxious to see how this unfolds, the way that this plays out. But either way, um, I will keep you updated and let's let's hope for the best. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.